Hello, Tom Lebecki here with the latest edition of the New Theory Podcast. I am over 300 deep in podcasting. I get very excited about podcasting and certain guests, but this guest has me very, very excited and his colleague. So first I want to welcome Mike Mandel, who I am calling today the TikTok lawyer. Mike, how are you doing today? Good, good. Happy to be here. Happy to have you. And his colleague, Sebastian Paredes, who I understand is kind of the, the man behind the curtain. Sebastian, welcome to the New Theory Podcast today. We have you on, Sebastian. We, we yes, lost sir. you in audio. I'm sorry. A bit of a delay. Yes, He's right here. There. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, th thank you for having me. No worries. We're kind of a show, but no worries. Take your time. Now I'm just playing. All right. So we're going to start off with Mike uh -huh. and then we'll get to Sebastian. So, so Mike, your background, Michael, Michael or Mike, what do you prefer? Let's go with Mike. Mike, you're a PI attorney by training, correct? Yeah. I mean, I actually was doing defense work for about seven and a half years beforehand, defending the pharmaceutical companies, plane oh, wow. crashes, um, anyone that made a product that, that hurt someone um, and, uh, you know, wanted to switch over and uh, be on the other side, the more righteous side, I guess to say. Um, <laughs> and so that's when I started, you know, actually uh, using social media because beforehand you work for a huge law firm, you can't really use it. Correct. So when you went over to the other side, the good side, if you will, let's call it the plaintiff side, if, you, if it's OK. Um, That's right. And you start doing social media. What was the first medium you did and what were those results? Uh, we started off doing uh, TikTok and Instagram at the same time. Oh, wow. Um, the well, the, the deal with it. Hold on one second. I just want yeah. to I keep getting these phone calls. So I don't want it to interrupt us. No um, so uh, the, you know, a lot of what you can do on TikTok can be repurposed on Instagram, right? Correct. Um, so the idea going into it was to use those two platforms. Um, and, uh, you know, with Instagram had already been used by lawyers a lot, yeah. uh, TikTok less so. Um, and so Sebastian, and I kind of targeted those two platforms with the idea of giving um education to people uh but you know ni i think neither of us expected to have the growth that we ended up getting i mean that's always the goal but it was never to to explode into what it what it has but we're both grateful for that that's awesome and sebastian i think you and i do similar i'm a digital marketer by my day job you have a, seem like a great marketing background and so forth you got a great client here you got a great colleague and friend you started creating some content. When did you know you struck gold? Like, did you always know? And then, wow, you know, I'm not a surprise. Or tell me that moment, that inflection point where you're like, wow, we got something here. Yeah. So I remember the exact day like it was yesterday, honestly, man. It was uh, when we were uh, posting some videos and uh, there's one that we posted. I know Mike knows which one it is. It's the uh, legal loophole one that we talked about, about a uh, finite uh about like a legal drinking age, legal loophole. Uh, and that one hit about like, you know, a million views and in, uh, in like 45 minutes, it was like an hour. It was incredible. Uh, and after that, we knew like, wow, like this, you know, there, there is some uh, real attention about people wanting to know the law. And I guess getting a bit more of a transparent uh, background about, you know, how the law works and getting more information. So we kind of just doubled down on that, uh, created more content through that. Uh, the snowball effect kind of grew and we just uh, did a lot more. And, and, and Michael, from your perspective, and you're great on camera, you have a good vibe and everything else, very handsome guy, but like <laughs> you're, a, you're a lawyer, you know, like did this come natural to you or did it need some coaching? Walk us through the content, because the content generation, you guys make it look easy, but you guys do a lot to make it look like it's not a lot, right? Which is a compliment. So how was it yeah. for you in front of the camera and, and rolling this out? Uh, you know, I do think I have a, a, a natural energy, but, you know, sometimes you need someone to kind of bring that out, which Sebastian would help with. Um, sometimes he'd be like, look happier, especially if we're working till three, four a.m. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that can happen. Uh, but, uh, you know, we the, there's a lot of work that goes into these. I mean, the these 15, 30 second videos do not take 15, 30 seconds. To that make. is correct. Um, start to finish, probably 
uh, anywhere between an hour and a half to two hours for each one. Yep. Uh, and, you know, it's just a lot of brain power that goes into it from, you know, I, I, I talk about it a lot with um, people that when we're thinking of script ideas, it's almost like a music studio. You know, we're bouncing off ideas for then we, we we're like, OK, we like this idea. But how do we say it shorter? How do we say yeah. it? So it's still accurate, because as a lawyer, I can't say anything that misinterprets the law or misleads Correct. people. Everything Correct. has to be accurate. Uh, but you also can can only say so much in 15, 30 seconds. So yeah. um, it's kind of that fine line of, of making sure you're, you're you're giving proper information, but you're limited on time. So it does take a lot of effort even just to come up with the script part. Well, p part of the reason I wanted to reach out was because I I was able to get doc, you know, Dr. Miami, he did a lot with Snapchat. I'm not sure if you heard of him. And, yeah. and I have actually have an aesthetic, never told by looking at me, but I have an aesthetic background in marketing. And one of the things for him was a lot of the old fuddy duddies from th their board was kind of giving them crap. And, you know, he was only complying everything was above board, but you know, like the old stodgy guard kind of gives you crap and, you know, and like he was fine and he got through it and he disrupted you're disrupting in the legal space. Do you get like appropriately, do you get like some pushback? Have the bar called you up and said, hey, like nothing did anything wrong, but you know, you're disrupting. So did you ever get any pushback or anything from the legal community? Uh, you know, most of the people on TikTok were actually very supportive. Uh, nice. They, you know, there was a small community of lawyers on TikTok. Um, they were all kind of rooting for me. Nice. Uh, I still got messages from them saying we're, we're rooting for you. Uh, yes. Some of them even, you know, uh, copy some of the, you know, uh, posts that we do in a, in a, in a funny way, yeah. um, but uh, very supportive on that. And uh, Instagram is probably not as much because it's, you know, bigger. Okay. Um, I definitely have had some comments where they're like, well, what you said is not 100 percent every single thing that can be done. And oh, obviously, <laughs> especially coming from a lawyer. Yes, there's a million different ways to to say things and say there's other options or, you know, um, yeah. If you're in a different country, it's different. I don't know. You know, like there's all <laughs> you, can, you can do that and we can all agree to to uh, disagree on that. Yeah. But, you know, the, the whole point of of these are just to educate people about the basic rights and not get into the nitty gritty Agreed. about everything. That's when you hire a lawyer. You know, exactly. so um, exactly. there's there's been some of that pushback, but all in all, mostly, um, you know, very supportive from both the, the people that follow me and and the lawyers that have spoken with me. That's amazing. And Sebastian, um, I'm judging, I'm guessing that obviously Michael's the expert, the legal expert and so forth, but you probably partner up on the content. And although you guys make dry content very viral, if you will, Sebastian, from your perspective, how do you keep it fresh? How do you keep the engine going from a content perspective? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, you know, there's only so much that you can talk about in law. So we've been really trying to focus on expanding into other aspects of things that, you know, relate to law and yeah. are under kind of this uh, similar umbrella, uh, whether it be to, you know, how to be a better communicator, how to be a better persuader, how better to negotiate, negotiator. I like that one, how to, how to negotiate, <laughs> how to pick up on body language. Uh, psychology hacks to persuade people. I mean, th there's a lot of other sub umbrellas that you can, you know, talk about, talk about and expand on. Um, you know, I, I, I really love to try and preach that, you know, uh, if you're ever running out of ideas and need a little bit of inspiration, uh, always try to like, you know, remember that, you know, how, how can I educate someone? How can I inspire someone? And how can I entertain someone? And, you know, if, if you really try and get your ideas under those three categories, uh, it gives you a little bit more clarity on what direction to go. So uh, that, that's what me and Mike do uh, a lot. And, and it allows us to really come up with some really interesting ideas. That's beautiful. So, Michael, our, our audience is primarily entrepreneurs, small business owners and the like. And I just had a CPA on earlier at a life insurance person on earlier, obviously you're in the legal field. Um, again, one of my learnings from Dr. Miami was he went very big on Snapchat. He actually lost to Snapchat of the year behind DJ Khaled and Kylie Jenner. And I feel like you're the Dr. Miami of TikTok, which I think is a good compliment. Um, but with him, he actually went back to his colleagues a few years later for some of those stodgy old guys and gals that were getting on him and said, listen, from a promotional perspective, I'm spending less on pay-per-click. I'm spending less, you know, on SEO and that kind of stuff because he's getting awareness. He's trading time over money. You know that as a lawyer, right? So how has this affected your practice 
And if so, if, if positively, you know, were you able to maybe pull away some traditional marketing and replace it with this? Or are you still doing this and still doing traditional marketing? What effect does this kind of TikTok stardom, if you will, had an effect on your practice? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely had an effect on my practice. Yeah. Um, anyone considering whether they should use social media to market their business should be doing it. You shouldn't even right. question. Correct. Um, the, you know, you have nothing to lose except for your time. Yes. But you don't have to pay, um, you know, to post something and film it yourself, um, you know, and, and you can kind of just do that and you should be doing that. Um, it's had an amazing positive impact on my legal practice. It's allowed me to connect with lawyers across the country that I send cases to and work with, oh, as wow. well as connect with clients across the country for every type of legal issue. Um, you know, the whole goal that I went into this was to help people. Um, I was sick of representing the the other side that wasn't helping and I wanted to help. And now I have the reach to help everyone in the country um, in a way that, you know, I could have never done without the power of social media. So um, it's a beautiful thing. I'm really happy about it. And uh, anyone, you know, thinking about what they should do um, as far as marketing goes, that's that's probably your first step, especially if funds are tight or something like that. Um, the, you know, one of the benefits compared to the traditional marketing ways is that um, this has allowed me to really connect with people. I mean, a billboard and a pay for click thing is there's no, there's no emotional connection with Correct. someone you're talking to or people wanting to talk to you. I mean, yep. they're basically being pushed out something in their face, uh, mm -hmm. rather than them coming out to you organically. So that's uh, a huge benefit compared to that type of advertising. That's amazing. And, and Sebastian, this is, I think a little bit more your wheelhouse where you'll post something and I think Mike, I think you'll appreciate this, Sebastian, you as well. I have an eight month year old daughter. My fiance put her on TikTok. She already has 93,000 followers and wow. one, yeah, one video got 8 million views. I'll, wow. send you the, I'll send you the link just, just for craps and giggles. But, but so, and we stayed away from Instagram because we feel like the algorithm is different. So Sebastian, how do you walk us through where you do a great video with Mike, you upload it to TikTok, you upload it to as a reel for Instagram, you obviously get different results, right? But do you take the same strategy for content that you do for TikTok and, and Instagram and see where it lies? Or do you um, dedicate certain strategies to one platform over the other? Because there are distinctions and the results are much different. Walk us through the strategy of TikTok versus Instagram from your perspective. So, I mean, I think at the end of the day, you know, looking at the algorithm of these platforms, all these platforms want is for their viewers and users to stay on their platform longer. Uh, that, that is the common denomin denominator okay. between all platforms. So if you can curate your content to uh, focus on those points, uh, whether it be, you know, highlighting watch through rate, making sure that all your viewers are watching your, your videos as all the way through. Uh, preferably increasing your rewatch rate, which is going to uh, allow for people to, you know, rewatch your content multiple times and then share your content uh, acting as social currency. So really making sure that you're curating your content uh, so that, you know, when people share it, uh, you know, people can be perceived as someone that is, you know, uh, you know, showing you something entertaining, showing you something that you didn't know, showing something that can relate to you. Uh, you know, anytime, you know, you find something on Facebook and you say like, oh my God, I have to send it to this friend because she's dealing with this thing. Or we were just talking about that and you send it. And now you look like the cool person because you sent a very uh, entertaining piece of content. Uh, that's what you should be striving for. And, and that's kind of cookie cutter for any single platform. There's no really like uniqueness uh, to either, you know, this is what's going to work for TikTok. This is what's going to work for Instagram. There's definitely different strategies that you can use to, you know, if you, you know, post something on TikTok because the organic growth is a lot easier there uh, and you want to convert people onto Instagram, then you can, you know, say, oh, uh, watch me talk about this and in, in more depth uh, on my Instagram or go to part two for my Instagram. Uh, you know, there's different strategies that you can do for there. But to answer your question, uh, you know, it, it's really important that you just curate your content for, you know, uh, watch through rate and, and rewatch rate, because that's what's going to help you on any platform. Love it. Now, Mike, have you been stopped yet for selfies and autographs yet? Uh, yeah, I have, uh, 
I was actually on a date one time and, and the, this girl had to take a picture of, of another girl that came up to me. So that was kind of um, awkward. Uh, but uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it, it, uh, I, I, and funny enough, I was just at Best Buy today too to get some audio equipment uh, for something Sebastian and I are about to shoot later today. Yeah. And the person recognized me with my mask on. So wow, um, definitely... You know, I don't have too much time to go out in public just because I'm constantly working. Yeah. But the few times that I have gone out, um, you know, people recognize me, but I always tell them that I appreciate their support and keep watching because that's what we're here for. You know, I love it. We're, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up soon. But my question, I guess, first to Mike and then Sebastian, you, you, we, again, we do a lot of marketing for plastic surgeons and stuff. And we actually some of their accounts are not not like your level, but doing pretty well. And there's a lot of offers coming through. So like now that you build up a platform, and you gave some great, great education. And you're doing some great stuff, but you also have like your practice. You know, do you do you want to maybe monetize a platform as its own entity? Do you want to maybe use that to increase your law practice? I know I'm asking for the secret sauce, but that's what we do. But what what's your strategy moving forward now that you struck gold? Like, what 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 are some of your strategies moving forward? Then I'll ask Sebastian next. Yeah, um, you know, on one hand, I have my law practice, and my strategy there is to continue to expand to continue to offer people help for any type of legal issue no matter what state they're in um and have the resources and connections to connect them with lawyers that i work with that i trust so that they know when they're reaching out to me uh, a lawyer that they hopefully trust that they're also going to be uh working you know they'll get their their it legal issue handled by uh, a lawyer i will work with that i also trust uh, because in this in this field just like with doctors as you know you can't really go on yelp and, and see oh this is going to be a good lawyer um, right. And especially, you know, most of the stuff when it comes to doctors or lawyers, it's someone told you by word of mouth that this person is good. Right. So, yeah. you know, no, a lot of referrals, doctors give referrals to other doctors. If you trust one of them, you can trust that uh, referral most likely. And that's kind of the idea here. Um, you know, as far as my law firm goes, expanding and in that sense. That's excellent. So, Sebastian, before we conclude, um, obviously, you got this you guys are doing really well. You're killing it. Um, what do you want to see? What's next? What, you know, you're, it seems like you might be the, about the strategy collaborating with, with Mike, um, from a strategic standpoint, what's next? What do you envision for the brand? Oh, we might've lost them. I think we lost them. Oh, uh, well I can tell you cause I've, I've yeah. heard him talk about it before, but it's, uh, it's mostly, um, trying to expand mm -hmm. beyond just law. Right. So what are lawyers, um, affiliated with, right. Persuasion, as he was saying, yep. um, arguing, um, you know, how to control a room. Uh, communications, public speaking, things like that. Um, so that's kind of the next realm as far as expanding the brand is is giving people more than just legal tips um, and and facts about the law, but instead giving them tips about how to live their life and live it in a more confident or more um, you know uh, assertive way. What's the most famous person that you could mention reach out to you, even if it's just a hello or love what you're doing? Have you got anybody? Uh, celebrities reach out or anybody notable reach out gosh um i don't think so yet nothing nothing too crazy to tell to tell your followers well i i will tell you this though my kids know who you are he's here now oh, oh there you are very handsome guy we needed you to have you on film earlier to help with the ratings um so i i guess my last, I, I, I guess i guess my last question for each of you and i'll go to sebastian first and mike and then we'll conclude is sebastian like like you guys struck gold here, right? And you're doing some great things and you have some great intent behind it. And I know you guys are going to do even greater things uh, with it. What were some of the challenges you overcome when you first started, right? Because people just see, you know, four and a half million users, good looking do uh, uh, lawyer out there. But we all know that it took 20 years to become an overnight success, right? And what are some of these obstacles you had maybe early on when you started this? that you overcame that would help our, our readers and, and I'm sorry, listeners appreciate your guys' journey a little more. Yeah, sure. So I know exactly how to talk upon this. Uh, so, um, you know, when, when, when we first started, you know, one of the key points of getting more traction on your, on your profile is, you know, one of the first 12 videos that you post uh, has to get some level of traction. Uh, we were shooting for anywhere between, you know, a a a anything above 25,000 views, I think, as for your first 12 videos, is a good amount of traction to, you know, give TikTok the uh, perception that, hey, this is a profile that just started. It's already got some traction. Let's maybe push it a little bit further 
Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we tried literally four times uh, to, to, to actually have that happen. You know, we posted 12 videos, uh, you know, they flopped. And then we would literally delete the account, start again, and just add an underscore to our, our, our username. And, and then switch, the and then switch like it back three, later. Then switch it back later. When yeah, it exactly. Out. So we got to the point where we were like, had three underscores, you know, for a whole month. You know, then we obviously got the original account. But, you know, in those cases, it's super important to, you know, uh, it's not a matter of having the mentality that it's not, it's not a matter of if, but when. And, you know, keep on pushing. Uh, I, I, I always tell everyone, don't focus so much on, on, on the views and the comments and, and all that stuff uh, and the likes. Like really try to focus more on, you know, going back to what I said, which is, you know, are you educating someone? Are you entertaining someone? Are you inspiring someone? Are you happy with the content and information that you're delivering? And if you are, then continue doing that. Uh, because as soon as you get caught up in, 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 in the views and the likes, uh, you start identifying yourself with it. Uh, you say like, oh, my views are doing bad. I'm bad. Uh, and, and, and it's just, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it leads to really, really bad, uh, or it's, it's, it's not good. So, uh, I, I, I would, how you recommend, you know, uh, you know, like I said, starting off with 12 videos in the, in the vault. So you have something that you can post, you know, three times a day for four days and, and just keep pushing. If it doesn't work, delete the account and restart again and, and do it until it works. Because if, if you keep trying, it eventually will happen. It eventually will happen. I mean, TikTok's an amazing platform. It will happen. And it allows you to kind of A-B test and, and see what works. Yeah. And, you know, to add to that, too, you really want to pay attention to your audience and what they are liking and not liking. You know, you, you if if you notice that people are liking certain things, then go with that. Continue going with that. Don't yeah. go. Don't sometimes what you think is the best is not really the best. Yeah. Um, so you want to pay attention to what people like, what people want um, and, and continue posting in that direction. The market decides what's right. You don't. Exactly. Well, let me ask you a question, though, because. Um, as a digital marketer, as a marketer, sometimes I have this gut and it happens like, bam, I'm right. And then it's obviously the opposite as well, right? I, I'm a big believer, let the market decide as well. Are you guys at this point pretty lockstep on whatever your launch is popping? Or are you still like, damn, I thought that one was going to do so much better and it didn't. Are you guys lockstep? Well, it's definitely, it's definitely a little bit of both. I think we know <laughs> that certain things are probably going to be good, but yeah. some things, and it happens often, we think are going to be like, you know, go – Go straight to the moon and it just isn't um it. and it's it's really a, it's it's a testing thing you know you just go out there and as sebastian said you just don't give up you don't let that define you and you continue to put <laughs> put content out that you believe personally is going to be quality um and that's really what matters at the end of the day that you believe you're putting out something um of worth to the world love it so last question mike you are going to get a lot more media requests not just from this but you're going to get a lot more media requests you're good on camera you're a great guy Give us a little little known fact about you that not everybody knows. Oh man, what am I gonna say? Maybe you'd be better at answering that. <laughs> <laughs> you must, you must trust Sebastian. Oh, uh, Caught me off guard on this one. Little known fact: um, I played the uh, saxophone in elementary school. Oh, How about that? <laughs> all right, all right. We'll, we'll save the juicy one for our next interview, <laughs> gentlemen. I, I'm glad we connected. You guys are pros. You have some support from us and our audience. And uh, I, listen, everybody knows who you are. I'm being serious. I said, hey, I'm doing the TikTok lawyer guy. And every single person, 100% recall, knew who you were uh, from nice. all different age ranges. But with that being said, how can we find you guys anyway? Um, at Law by Mike on TikTok, at Law by Mike on um, Instagram. Uh, fairly easy. And then Sebastian. Yeah, I just uh, Sebastian Paredes on uh, Instagram and on TikTok, I hustle. Excellent. Put some links below. Thank you so much, gentlemen.